All righty, we'll start our next press conference. During the Duck Commander 500 pre-race activities today, Guinness World Records will officially certify Big Hoss TV as the world's largest high-definition LED video board at 20,633.33 square feet. Joining us today is Guinness World Records official Philip Robertson. No Morning. relation to the Duck Dynasty folks? None whatsoever. It could be a family reunion, but uh, Phil is actually not my father. <laughs> We have Panasonic Enterprises Solutions Company President Jim Doyle and Texas Motor Speedway President Eddie Gossage. I'll start with uh, Eddie and Jim, and just uh, we'll start with Jim on the far right. Just tell us about this whole project coming to fruition. It's, it's a mammoth project. We've been getting rave reviews thus far. Just tell us about the overall theme, concept, etc. cetera. Well, um, this is Texas, and if you're not big in Texas, you're, you're nothing. So um, first it starts with, I think, Eddie's vision. Um, Eddie, Eddie came to us uh, a, a good time ago and said, look, we, we want to do something special. We want to change the game once again, as, uh, as uh, the Smiths have done in Charlotte. But he said, I want to take it a, another notch uh, up the chain. And we were like, wow, that's, that's going to be tough to do. But uh, so most importantly, it starts with Eddie's vision on what he wanted to do here at Texas Motor Speedway. And then collaboratively, I think between the teams, we came up with some options and some ideas. And at the end of the day, we had one, you know, one vision statement, you know, go big or go home. So uh, that made it easy to focus the teams on just bigger, larger, better uh, at, at every facet of the, of the construction, of the design, of the technology we're going to bring to bear. Uh, but at the, at the end of the day, the collaboration, the vision all came together, and we have, you know, what now is today Big Hoss TV and about to become the largest uh, HD TV screen in the world. So we're very excited and we're, we're very honored to be part of this project. Now, Eddie, we've gotten rave reviews from people on Twitter, um, fans coming up to you. Can you tell us or give us kind of an overview on on what the response has been, even in the garage, from drivers and crew and such. Yeah, I, uh, I think all of you have seen uh, that it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it, it is amazing what technology and money can accomplish. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, but it, it's been great to hear the fans, because that's who I care about, 100% uh, of them are loving it. And uh, it's, it, I think it exceeds their expectations and so that's what we like to do anytime we do anything is to exceed expectations uh, but uh, the competitors uh, I did learn from Joey Logano that if the screen is mostly red they can't see so if somebody has a big lead Sunday night afternoon night whenever we run this race uh, and there's like eight laps to go the screen may go red uh, bring us a caution and tighten the field up. So just want you to know that. But um, uh, but uh, I did learn something from one of the spotters that I didn't know is that they use the uh, they use Big Hoss as a reference uh, as well as what they're seeing around the racetrack. So uh, we've used it this weekend uh, as a public service tool uh, to help keep our fans safe. We're running weather updates and things like that. And as you know, uh, Thursday evening. Uh, even though we didn't have anything going on on the racetrack as the evening went on, we had fans in the infield, and we used it to help serve notice to them that severe weather was en route, uh, about to occur, and uh, so it's played a great role in helping keep them safe. Uh, so it, it's, it's multi, th th there's just so many purposes for it, and besides that, we are Texas, and everything is not only bigger in Texas, but over in the back straightaway, it's the biggest, period. End of story, no qualifiers. It's the biggest, baddest television on the planet. And as long as we keep the interstate batteries and the remote charged up, we're good to go. So. <laughs> and speaking of qualifying, we have Philip here to officially certify that world record. Philip, we're all very familiar with the brand of Guinness World Records. We've grown up with it. Um, we all think it's a very cool brand, and, and we've seen the different categories and such that Guinness does recognize. Can you just give us a brief overview on how, the, how it all works and how you certify a record? Sure. I'll give you a quick background, too, on the company, because we, um, we do do a lot of work every year. We get between forty and 70,000 applications every year for records in every category, which is a tremendous volume of, of interest. Uh, between ten and 12,000 every year are successful. 
and uh, 3,000 go into each Guinness World Record book, and there's just about 70 of us worldwide working. So there's a, an incredible volume of, of information, and it's fascinating, not just from the traditional world's tallest man, world's heaviest athlete, but people coming together like Panasonic and Texas Motor Speedway to do something quite incredible for, for the fans too, to, to enhance an experience at a racetrack where it's going to be loud. So you've got a, a real audio input for all race fans, but now to see an additional vi visual input too is, is quite extraordinary to watch. So yes, we, we make sure that we certify every record with a series of guidelines. The guidelines in this instance for this category for the largest high definition television LED screen uh, were quite strict as well. We need to make sure that it's properly an HDTV screen, that it's full HDTV and not HDT re HDTV ready. Uh, in this instance, we needed to, to have information from Panasonic, which Jim and his team provided. Uh, we can see it's actually 1440 uh, pixels uh, high and 3,328 wide, so it's, it's truly colossal in its scale. Um, we need to see it working, which I have done today. Uh, it's nice to see my brother Phil on screen. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quick side note, you should have seen the look of disappointment on the driver's face this morning. He picked me up from the hotel when he thought he was picking up Phil Robertson, <laughs> and I stepped out without beard. <laughs> Poor lad. Um, it's a permanent installation, so we can see anything this scale isn't going to be temporary anyway, but we can see it's a permanent installation to, to the um, benefit of the team. And we've measured its surface area too. And as, as was mentioned earlier, the exact square footage of this, this colossal high definition screen is 20,614.31 square feet. I think you guys have got uh, 0.33, but uh, we're we're incredibly happy. We always tend to right. over exaggerate here a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Texas. It has to be huge. I mean, I, I respect and enjoy coming to Texas because I know something enormous is going to be here waiting for me. So it's, it's colossal and it's fantastic. It's a new Guinness World Record, and I'm delighted to be here to you officially present and welcome Texas Motor Speedway back into the Guinness World Record Hall of Fame with a Guinness World Record certificate. Mr. Gossard, Thank congratulations, you. sir. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Do the official handshake photograph? Yeah, let's do that again. Jim? You want to get just in here? There you go. All right. I did bring a measuring tape too, but it appeared to be inadequate. <laughs> I thought that's how we lost the point one. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that board makes a lot of us feel inadequate. <laughs> <laughs> a quick question for Jim before we open the questions. Um, you hear people talk about, well, there's bigger screens and such across the world, whether it's Beijing or in Brazil and such. Can you kind of give us an idea on the differentiation between yes. what we have and Guinness can probably join in. Philip can tell us as well that it's totally different. Yeah, that, that's a good question because I think if you look online, sometimes you'll see uh, in China and Beijing, there's some screens that are actually technically larger than this. But when you look at those screens, those types of screens are more for just color and imagery, kind of the things you would look that would backdrop a stadium or something to give just color, uh, but not full motion video uh, high definition. So those are more... Uh, kind of a, what we would call a strip product that are spaced, the LEDs are spaced far apart. And again, it's just for color and enhancing sort of a mood or a feeling. But you can't really run video on that stuff. So in terms of being the largest high-definition TV in the world, this clearly is that. There's nothing on the planet that's, that's close. Um, we provide a lot of the screens globally, so we, uh, we know. Uh, when something big's going in, and we know uh, for a fact, and it's been validated that this is the biggest. Um, I think uh, I think this is a this is this has become an arms race, and and the winner right now, clear winner, of this arms race is Texas Motor Speedway. So I think it's quite exciting for the sport. I think it's obviously exciting for the track, uh, and I think it's yet yet another SMI Smith innovation in the sport. Uh, and in all sports, which is quite impressive to see this just keep happening and what this, what this group and this team does. So impressive, but nothing like it. I can say that 
anything close to this in the, in the resolution and the high definition that you can see out there. And I would concur with that. We've, um, we've measured nothing quite the scale and the level of technology that uh, the screen here at uh, Texas Motor Speedway is actually providing. So, yeah, I agree. So just a, you know, a couple other things on that. I mean, it's a million pounds, it's just under a million pounds. So just the, just the construction side of it alone is impressive. When you, when you look at the back of it and see how big this monster truly is, uh, uh, come, come rain, come shine, come high winds, tornadoes, hurricanes, doesn't matter. You can throw anything you want at that thing. It's going to be here, uh, and it's going to be shining bright. I think... Uh, if NASA has any issues or problems with a, a lost space shuttle or something like that, we're just going to flip that thing on its side, and we can signal and communicate with Mars if we need to with that thing. So, <laughs> We did have several questions uh, during the week when we were having inclement weather, um, and then we did mention that it withstands 130-mile-an-hour winds, and also that when you tested it, you hit golf balls into the LEDs, correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. I was going back to my staff. I said, "Really, we're hitting golf balls against it?" <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it's 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 built to last. Um, these LEDs themselves have a hundred thousand hour life, so it's not something you have to worry about. And uh, you know, the maintenance and support and, and the pride and care that we put into it, as well as the track puts into it. So this thing is going to be shining bright for many years to come here at Texas Motor Speedway. We'll open for questions. Steven? You know, Eddie, now that you have the world's largest TV screen, you can't, we can't argue with you about that. What's your next record you're going to go for? Well, Philip has another certificate here. I'm going to be jumping 33 <laughs> cars with uh, <laughs> Mickey, my friendly monkey, on my shoulder here during pre-race. So, um, and there will be fire involved. So, <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, you know, i got to be, in all seriousness, I'm just blessed to work for a company that is willing to spend the money that it does and places an importance on fans the way our company does. And so, uh, uh, you know, you don't buy one of those over there at Best Buy. It's very, very, very expensive. Uh, but obviously our company places a high value on serving our fans. And that is, to me, the ultimate fan amenity sitting over on the back straightaway. Uh, I can't imagine that there's a single person here that doesn't look at that and just their jaw drops and they're thrilled to have it. So um, I, I'm just appreciative to work, you know, with Bruton and Marcus Smith and, and uh, uh, to have the privilege to run Texas Motor Speedway because you're allowed to do those kinds of things. So it's it's pretty amazing. And what guy doesn't want to have the biggest television in the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question. A technical question uh, for the, the TV. For people that have LED TVs or little LED flashlights or something like that, how big is each LED? You talked about how many up and how many across. Do you know how big each individual LED is? Yeah, if you, if you look at the, the LED, there are diodes that come out of the board. They're, if you looked at the eraser on a pencil tip, a little bit smaller than that. Um, red, green, blue, and they form the colors just like your TV does. Yeah, yeah. If you if you saw one of those, I mean, uh, LED technology has been around for a while, as you know from calculators and things like that. But it's advanced to the point where the brightness and the uniformity that you can look up and say, "Wow, that's that looks just like a TV," um, because essentially it's using the same concepts, technology. Um, there's a lot of video processing power that sits in the control room here that makes those light. You know, it's like a big light bright, right? if you remember light brights, to make that all come together and, and show, you know, uh, Duck Dynasty and it's all its beautiful colors takes a lot of technology on the back end. So, uh, but at the end of the day, there's just under, I believe, just under 15 million of those little guys up on the board working I th hard. I think there's 14.4 million. Um, it's been cleaned twice in the last 10 days, yeah. uh, but uh, you, you go up on a lift and honestly use a power washer and clean them. Uh, Jim Staff has done that because they wanted it to be perfect for its debut, debut. but there's 14.4 million LEDs uh, capable of producing 281 trillion different colors, which I didn't know was that existed. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the screen itself is as big as... And there's a number of comparisons. The, the, the Lincoln Memorial, uh, nine Alamos, two jumbo jets, two 
sphinxes. I want to say that clearly. Two sphinxes. Uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing. Jim, you mentioned the technology. Looking down the road three, four, five years, how has the technology upgraded from even screens from four or five years ago? Is it tremendous? Is it minimal gains? It's, it's a huge gain. Um, and uh, if you look back um, that long ago, you could see, you know, you can see the resolution's not perfect. And, and Eddie talked about 281 trillion colors. I mean, that, that essentially is, instead of skipping things on the range, it is the color range, pretty much. Um, so the true colors, which are important to this sport and the brands that you're trying to represent, uh, you want that accurate color representation. And the fans want to see it as it's supposed to be, right? That's why we, we buy these TVs. Um, but the good news for Eddie, because he made a big investment, is that we're getting to that point where the resolution is so good. It's like uh, we, we make TVs, we obviously. Uh, we make 720p TVs and 1080p. And now the latest, if you were in Las Vegas in January, you would have saw 4K TVs. But you're getting to a point where the human eye can't tell the difference which is not as good for my business of selling more TVs. <laughs> but um, that resolution will be hard to invest, right? You're just the human eye. You're running into the physical limitations of the human body. So that resolution will be perfect for a long time, and it's not going to get much better than that. It really isn't. It really isn't because the human eye, unless we become cyborgs or computers ourselves, it's not going to get much better than that. These LED diodes that, that we were talking about, the 14.4 million of them, they're 16 millimeters apart. And the, the more you have, the closer together they are, the sharper and crisper the, the picture, uh, which stands to reason if you've ever you know, enlarged a photograph or things like that, that's what you would do by moving the, the LEDs apart. But um, 16 millimeters apart, uh, and, and for instance, the one that I think a lot of you have referred to Wikipedia and talked about the one in Brazil. I think those LEDs are like a foot apart. Yeah. So it's, you know, apples and oranges on that. So that's why he's here, Bill's <laughs> here from Guinness, that this is the one. Willie Martin Blitz Weekly. Congratulations, Eddie. Jim, thank you. My question is, you're talking about all these different size parameters. Once the race begins, as far as the number of breakdowns you can do for, like, uh, split screens, replays, how far can you go as far as breaking things down for multi-screening for something that big? The, the, the technology actually here that we're using in the control room is, is very unique. It's, it's new. Um, we partnered with a company, VizRT, that basically does most of what you see on broadcast. When you see NASCAR on Fox or ESPN, that same engine that's powering that is what's actually powering this show. Um, it gives us an ability to make that screen a palette. So I think as you start to see the integration of the sponsorship and the scoring and the creativity, especially someone such as Eddie and the staff around here, when they start to get to use this toy and they start to play with the palettes, I think you're going to see some amazing integration of scoring and live video. Um, so at the end of the day, the old world, like if you went to some old sports stadiums, you see a lot of squares. So scoring in one square and video, no, no more. This is your, as you're probably already seen, things are going to overlap. They're going to mesh together. Um, it is, it is, and will be beyond broadcast quality out there. So limited really only by the creativity of the people involved. And God knows if there's a place that's creative, it's right here. So We sat and went through, um, we sat in the control room, which is above the front, uh, start finish line, and went through a variety of treatments uh, and really we're trying to determine what was legible because, you know, you can cut it into a million different pieces if you'd like, but it's not legible any longer. And so we found things that we liked and things that we thought was, you know, really just too small to cut it into too many different screens. And, um, you know, so it's, uh, but we're just beginning to learn about it. And uh, that's the exciting thing is, is that uh, part of all this has been in the last, really just the last couple of months as our staff has been working with Jim's staff and the Panasonic folks in production to develop what's on that board. And, you know, you never think about it. You turn on the television, you just don't think about it. you got to think about the font size. Is it 
standard? Is it italics? You know, on and on and on uh, of everything that you do to maintain a consistent look and, and things of that nature. So it's, you know, we've gone really from scratch to uh, opening a brand new television station on Thursday, which we will turn off tonight and won't bring that television station back on the air until June. And, and so it's quite a, I never thought about the content. Uh, it's quite a laborious process, and, and but as, as we're learning it, we, we think, you know, we could do this, we should do that. Uh, the creativity it allows is, is genuinely exciting. Big Hawk, LED could be an acronym for Lifelong Eternal Delivery. Lifelong Eternal Delivery. <laughs> you could, there you go. There you go. I think it's a whole new Guinness category. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, Eddie, Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires. How much power does this thing use? I mean, obviously it takes a lot of energy to produce the, uh, the, the image, but what are we talking about here? Uh, I got to turn to Jim. I honestly can't. Back when we were negotiating this, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at all these power usage things and whatnot, and I don't know what it means. Uh, but our people did. But I'm going to turn to Jim. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I think I have the numbers somewhere, but I don't have it. It's, it's um, two things. One, it's, it's not small, but it's smaller than it would be if it were a bunch of incandescent light bulbs. Like if you remember the real old technologies, because LEDs are far more efficient. Uh, but it's, I, we'd have to get you the exact numbers, but it's 1,300 kilowatt hours. Or I can tell you it costs a few hundred dollars per hour to operate, which on one hand is outrageous if it's you and me at home. But for something like this, it's, it's surprisingly affordable. So it, it uses really a small amount of power because it's LED. Yeah. If it weren't LED, it would be very expensive to run. And a follow-up to that, how many batteries in the remote? Uh, there's two interstate batteries. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So actually, Norm Miller sent me an, an, uh, a text this morning and said, make sure you mention that it's powered by interstate batteries. So uh, I've done my job. 